against them more for the same. Yeah, we're facing with the lines. Yeah. This line right here. All right, hello, Ms. Betts, Grant Morgan. This is John Michael, my brother, Delta Chi, till we die. All right, we're gonna be giving our presentation over Greek government. All right, so first we have, talking about city-states. Cities in ancient Greece acted as independent entities. Many fought over land. There's different economies and traditions and different forms of government. Um, with the many fought over land, um, because of how many city-states there were, land was scarce, meaning that there wasn't for a lot to go around, especially with how many there were, and each city-state trying to consistently grow and change and go and grow, they were, was always constant fighting. All right, the types of governments um, we are going to mainly be focusing on are monarchy, um, which is where the power is in the hand of one person, such as a king or queen, and the power is usually passed down um, through the generations of a certain family. An oligarchy is when the power is in the hands of a small group of people, and usually those are the rich, like they're the richer citizens, so they control everything. And um, democracy is when the people control everything, or when people control the decisions that the government makes, such as in America. All right, the different types of city-states we have. Um, different city-states, not different types. Sorry, different city-states, my bad. There's Athens, right here. Sparta, there. Corneth, Thebes, Crete, and the Lesbos. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Athens was a direct democracy, meaning the citizens voted um, for the government and actually participated in it. Any adult male over the age of 20 could vote, and it was the duty to do so. The officials was elected by the assembly, which was chosen by a lottery in a process called sortation. Um, only males were allowed to political participation, so no females could vote. And then they began as an oligarchy, but then developed into a um, democracy. Also with democracy being the least common government. All right, here we have Sparta. Sparta was an oligarchy. Sparta had two kings, that of two hereditary kings of the Aegid and your 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 pointed your pointed families. Uh, there was a twenty eight member council of elders that limited their powers, though they were kings. And usually, you know, back in that day, when you have a king, king does whatever they want, whatever they say goes. But for them, they were limited by that council of elders. Elders were elected for life, meaning that. Once you got to a certain age where you were considered an elder and you were elected to be a part of that 28 member council, your term was for life, basically until you died or you're not able to fulfill your job and your commitment to the city state. Elders mostly made decisions on criminal matters, such as someone steals or someone, uh, what's the word when you leave? Like when you're in battle and you leave? Uh, um, desertation. Desertation. So something like that. You're gonna get your hand chopped deserts. off, but not the army. The army was the main concern because Sparta was definitely the powerhouse of Greece, or as I would call it, them the mitochondria, just like the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, they trained their children to become warriors from birth, such as as soon as their babies were born, they would be inspected by a certain person in Sparta and if the baby looked disformed or anything was wrong with the baby, the baby would be thrown out. Also something cool during the war with Persia or whatever, uh, there's a movie off made about it, the 300, 
Uh, funny story, fun fact, or whatever, there's actually only 298 people that died, or 298 Spartans that died, it was not 300. And another fun fact is that um, Alexander the Great's grandfather um, threatened to invade Sparta and said if he did invade, then he would pillage their land and destroy their way of life. And the Spartans responded with one word of if. All right, the Peloponnesian War, uh, since we talked about Spartans, Sparta and Athens were the two main cities in it. Um, it lasted from 431 to 405 BCE. It was a result of the Athenians breaking a peace treaty they signed with Sparta and attacking Sparta. Um, Sparta was victorious in this. Um, it took many years, but eventually they were able to um, attack or take the capital. Um, instead of, actually, instead of destroying Athens, what Sparta did was they realized there was such a big part of the Greeks' way of life and the future of humanity that instead of destroying Sparta, they just incorporated it into their empire and um, spared them. Next we have Corneth. They were a monarchy. Uh, Sif How you say it? Syphilis. Syphilis ruled from about... Cyphelis. Cyphelis ruled from about 657 to 550. Uh, Cornus had control over two strategic ports, which was a main thing considering for with them having those two ports definitely limited trade for other city states. They were able to regulate that and you know get permission for those to pass. And they were also an ally with Sparta in the Peloponnesian War, talking about how other city states joined Sparta or backed up Sparta or backed up Athens. Corneth was one of the ones that backed up Sparta and helped them. Uh, Thebes was an oligarchy. It was very well known for farming. Um, the wealthiest there created laws saying that only they could own the land, so no new um, people could come into power. Um, Thebes and Athens um, fought over the land between them, and since um, Thebes was known for farming, that's very important for them, so they can have their crops and stuff. Um, it is the home of Oedipus, who is known to have the um, mother wife, well, his wife is his mother, and since the term Oedipus complex, where that comes from, and it reorganized as a, as a democracy in 379 BCE. Next we have Crete. Crete was a monarchy. Um, it was the island south of mainland of Greece. Uh, monarchy was supported by a well-designed bureaucracy. Um, it was home of the king Minos and Minos, and location of the Labyrinth, 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 and Minotaur. Right. The Let's Lesbos. Lesbos was Gotta love them. Um, ruled by tyrants. It was an oligarchy until they were kicked out by aristocrats in three or in 630 BCE, which then the aristocrats then took over. Um, it's the home of the poet Sappho, who is known for uh, um, progressing the literature of the time away from epics and into more romantic um, styles. Um, it's well known for its wine production. Um, so it was, wine was a big thing back then, as what most people drank. So they were widely known for their wine. In fact, they have, um, like one of the, they have a, a shrine to the god of um, wine and theater, uh, which is Dionysus. And the wine is, it kind of explains what their economy sourced around, which was the, poet or theater of Sappho and the wine production um, of the time. Also, what I like to think about is for wine being the main drink, because you know, they don't really have what we have now, like scotch, whiskey, vodka, you know, stuff like that. And that makes me think like, you know, this wine must have been really good to get them drunk. 
And Ms. Betts, I don't know if you've ever been wine drunk before, but I would say it might be a different feeling than the normal vodka, scotch, or whiskey. And then this is our website page for all the sources. And thank you for watching our presentation. Yep, we appreciate you for the semester. This will be our last English class that we'll ever have to take. Thank you, you did a great job. You had so much extra information to share with us on top of what we, you were already teaching us from the PowerPoints and whatnot. So we just wanna say thank you and we thoroughly enjoy being in class and we hope you have a good semester next spring.